Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Demon Slayer Mugen Reshahin, the anime episode number seven, and this is the final episode of this season. Uh, not this season, but this uh, arc. Now, obviously, second season two is going to start. I think it's from the fifth. I think it's fifth. I I'll check it out after I react to it. After I've come finished reacting to this episode, I'll check everything about it. So. But now obviously we are I'm sure everyone's going to watch this episode is going to be ready we know what's going to happen people who have watched the movie and yeah this is going to be a bit difficult oh my god Ugh. like yeah so yeah let's get started like without wasting any more time like we have to get ready and to for the you know uh <laughs> for the feels you know we have to get ready for the feels that this episode will invoke in each and every one of us and yeah like we've seen it before we're, we're going to see this again and well i don't know anyways i don't know what even what i'm even saying but without further ado let's get started this is episode number seven of demon slayer mugen reshan so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right so here's the countdown three two one go here we go Damn, the animation is... Oh my god. Okay. Uh, nope. Oh boy. Set your heart ablaze. Here we go. Oh my god, Akaza is like so... Oh. Yeah, just like that, like... Yeah, this is like the unfair advantage that all the demons have. yeah oh yeah because of the okay water to fire suddenly it takes out a lot oh boy okay Okay. 
Yes, come on. Excuse me. Damn. Wow. Woo. My God, look at this. Whoa. Okay. All right, we all know what's going to happen here. My God. Damn. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. The brother. I don't know. Mm. Like, if everybody, like, the thing that the mom is saying, if everyone actually believed this, like, the world would be such a better place, isn't? Wouldn't it? Like, if everyone believed this and followed this. Mike. Like, such a simple, like, you know, advice, but people never seem to remember that. Human beings tend to forget. Whenever they reach that power, most, I'm not talking about everyone, most of the people tend to forget this simple lesson that everyone should remember yep there you go And here is the time when Akasa will do a complete 180, which is the thing that I really don't like. Like, flimsy ideals. Here we go, the complete 180 that he'll do. Well, but I can't blame him, you know, like fear of death is a big thing. Like it can change people in a second. It, it brings out the, you know, like the original person within you.
Oh my god. Ah. Uh. And he runs like a Well, there you go. <sighs> Ugh. But it, it's still not enough. God. Well, it's the same thing. What are you even talking about? Oh my god. Like... Yeah, like, this is where I lose all respect for Akaza. And Tanjiro really... Really, like everything that he's saying is completely true. Oh yeah, the Hinokane, yeah, Hinokame Kagura.
Oh my god. Wait, was this in the movie? Th this scene? Or is this an extra scene? I, I think it was in the movie. I can't remember properly, but... Okay, I, I was kind of wondering, how was the damage to... Oh yeah, he didn't know that, he was inside her. Oh my god. Your skin. <laughs>
Oh my god. <sighs> Damn, like <clears throat> Okay, well, that's the end of this episode and uh, Well, um, as I was saying, the thing about, like, the thing that really did not sit well with me with this portion is Akaza's sudden transformation into, like, you know, being like a, I don't know what to say, like, the way he, way he turns tails and runs with his weird um way of looking down on others even though he himself is like uh i don't know like has so many advantages because he's a demon and that that really did not sit well with me like he is like obviously there are prideful people and it's not bad to be prideful but being prideful and looking down on others and then at the end of it, running like you know away like a coward is something that I don't think ma mix mixes well. Like that's what Akaza did. He was looking down on them at the beginning. He's prideful. He was asking um, Rengoku to become a demon and on what not. He was saying, "Don't die, there, Rengoku." And then as soon as he sees that he himself, his life is in danger, he throws away all of those things probably forgets all of them the things that he has said and runs away like a coward like uh, i don't know like this is this is the thing that really pissed me off about akaza him but as i said you know like he not he not him only like any person i guess when faced with death in front of their eyes um i think every anyone will change like that like they can you know like throw away everything their ideals and everything and just to save themselves and i guess that's just primal human instincts at the end of the day so people who can surpass that go beyond that who can stand in front of death not be afraid and keep going don't succumb to their primal instincts of running away i think they're the m main heroes here and rengoku is one of them because unlike akaza even when he stared death in front of him he looked at death in front of him he did not run away or he did not you know try to save himself he he was concerned about all the other people, about Tanjira, about Inosuke, Zenitsu, Nezuko. And even he, if he was dying, he, he was able to stand there and keep his ideals strong and keep them protecting them. Which makes him obviously the better person, the better, the better human being altogether. Or, you know, and that makes him the winner. Unlike Akaza, who just runs away and as soon as he sees that he's going to die so yeah oh my god they did not say anything any kind of well i guess we already have an announcement well um just a sec uh let me check uh demon slayer season two i think it was the fifth fifth of december most probably 
Um, I'm talking about the entertainment district arc. Just a second. Uh, Mugen Resha Yukaku Hen or the entertainment district arc which is going to air from the 5th of December um, today the day I'm going to upload this is the 29th in my time zone uh, that means 36 more days so yeah like I'll, I'll probably upload this after six days I think yeah that's probably what I'm going to do we'll see so yeah all right this episode ah damn like ah every like we've seen this like you know all of us who have watched the movie all of us have seen this portion we know what's going to happen and yeah like still it is it's still sad being such a great character just you know Mm, unable to spend more time with him like that's the i think the main um what can i say like the sad part of this is like we got introduced to him a bit a bit late and he left too soon like just seven episodes we won't be able to see him anymore <clears throat> so yeah <clears throat> Seven episodes he was able to um make such an impact on every one of us on tanjiro on Nez uh, inosuke zenitsu so yeah okay so obviously this episode we can see um the final battle akasa versus rengoku and rengoku kind of gets a little flashback of his mom how his mom told him like the thing that his mom told him is such a simple thing that why do we have power why are people born stronger than the other because it's the duty of the people who are stronger to protect the one who are weaker help them and it's a very simple what can i say it's a very simple thing which every one of us knows like the biggest um, I think an uh, example of this is children you know, and their parents. Like the parents are a loss, way, you know, like when children are younger. The parents are obviously a lot stronger. They can do a lot of more things. They can care for their child. And, you know, that's why, that's what they do. They take care of their child without expecting anything from them. And I think that's like the prime example of what the mom said that young stronger people like, you know taking care of the weak helping them i think this is the like you know the the most prime example a parent caring for their child uh, without expecting anything in return which obviously the you know like that's why like you know the this this is such a simple thing that everyone of us knows and you know like people who like all of us all of us realize this is this is such a simple message but when people gain more strength or power not only in anime i'm not only talking about anime even in real life like you know like obviously in real life you don't have superpowers that's <laughs> that's not what i'm saying but what i'm saying is like when people gain more power in whatever means you know monetary power some other power you know like any type of power uh power of authority power of uh monetary means so these type of powers we not all of us but a few of us forget the fact that yeah we are supposed to not be arrogant but help people with this and you know make the world a better place place um uh, quite a few of us forget this and yeah this this episode really like you know the why, the way the mom says it it seems as if such a simple message but we realize that most of us who forget this like that's when we succumb to our power or greed or whatever you call it so we should always keep an eye out on not becoming that person 
So yeah, Rengoku shows shows how um, how that is done. Rengoku, we see him being the person who can protect everyone. He protects them uh, and does not, you know, like stand his ground even when he 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 was going to die. That's like the biggest way that Rengoku can show that, yeah, I like you know like biggest way that like in the end we see like the mom's like you know like coming, and she was asking, did I do okay, mom? The mom was, yeah, you you did perfect, and he smiled and passed away, like that shows like she he really what do you call it protected the the way the uh, no what do you call it really um uh yeah he he really protected the thing that you know like uh, the the way the mom told him to be the way the mom envisioned him to grow up he really became that person and he was able to fulfill the mom's uh, uh teachings or the way the thing that she taught him and uh yeah and uh now that's rengoku akaza here in the other place um i have to say i i don't know if he i like you know like demon slayer kind of does this i've seen this and not only demon slayer most animes do this but i've seen this quite a bit in demon slayer is that even the demons they have like a sad story by the end of it and when we get to know that we kind of feel bad for them even though they did some heinous stuff so like i've seen this in demon slayer so i don't know if anything like you know if akaza has some kind of backstory like that or not but for the initial impression of akaza even in the movie i my impression was not so good at all because of the thing that he does over here like obviously first of all he kills rengoku that's number one like obviously that's like the biggest thing and now <clears throat> I could still kind of could have respected him as a you know fellow warrior if he actually had his own ideals and did not like run away like that. I could have had a teensy bit of respect for him, but unfortunately that kind of did not happen at all because he just he just runs away like that. And he still has the gall to actually be prideful and look down on others. Like in the end, when we see him running away, when Tanjiro says that, um, come back, you coward, why are you running away? He has the gall to actually look back and like, you know, like look down on him and like, you know, say that, oh, it's I'm not running away from you guys. I'm running away from the sun. Don't you guys realize that? Realize that? Don't you have a brain? Like the gall to do that. Like how dare he? Like he, I don't know. Like I think this thing really pissed me off about Akaza. And I, this is one thing that I really don't like in anime characters is this type of a character, which is you are looking down on others. You know, like villains, there are good villains. There are some really good villains. I know that. But when a villain has this type of a character, not only a villain, if it's like an other character as well, you know, uh, if they have this kind of type of character of looking down on others, being prideful and, you know, just talking big, I really don't like it. And that's probably why I don't like Akaza that much because of his personality and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's just a personal thing, I guess. I don't know. But as I said, you know, like Demon Slayer kind of does this thing where we get a little backstory in the end. And who knows, maybe in the future episodes, probably this guy also has a sad backstory, which after listening to it, maybe, maybe I'll change my mind. And uh, yeah, we'll have to wait for that. So yeah, but for now, initial impression, not good. But obviously, yeah, this is a demon we are talking about. So obviously the initial impression won't be good. Like, what was I even expecting? <laughs> like, I think, you know, like, I, I think I was probably expecting a bit more from him being, like, you know, kind of expected him to be like an idealistic demon or something. I don't know why. But, you know, looking at his character design, I felt like he would be one of those characters, you know, who who is a villain, but at the same time, like, has this type of uh, ideal, this type of uh, uh, strong will or something. I thought it would be something like that, like an idealized 
uh, you know, idealized version of a villain, I thought. <laughs> Which probably kind of got crushed in the end. And that's why <laughs> I think <laughs> in the worst way possible, it got crushed. And that's why I think I, I was probably like, nah, this, this guy is, yeah. But yeah, that's just probably just me. But we'll see. As I said, who knows? Maybe he has some kind of a past, a sad past. We'll, we'll have to wait for that. But yeah, that was that. That's my impression of Akaza and obviously Rengoku, you know, as Tanjiro says. Like, Tanjiro kind of explains everything which I myself wanted to say about Rengoku. Is that he, like, you know, unlike Akaza, he, he stood his ground. So what gives him the, <coughs> you know, like, gall to talk back like that? Like, Rengoku is a million times more better than Akaza or anyone. <coughs> because he, even with his human body, he was able to protect so many people. And, yeah, he did not run away like you. So, yeah, that's basically it. Like, you know, Reng Rengoku, my impressions of him. And, like, with the small amount of time that we got to spend with him, it was enough to actually, you know kind of make him uh what do you call it like establish him as a character as a memorable character these seven episodes were enough for it like there's a lot of characters that kind of slowly slowly establish themselves as a good character and as a memorable character while like, you know in this you know in demon slayer Ryangugu was able to do that in seven episodes and i doubt anyone will forget him ever so yeah and uh, this really shows how how much more stronger they need to become uh tanjiro zensu and you know like nothing they were nothing in front of akaza just like you know like seeing that he was able to defeat the other demon the lower demon the guy on top of the train you no know? it it made us feel as if oh maybe tanjiro is slowly slowly becoming stronger and he maybe he'll be capable enough to actually fight the stronger demons no this this whole thing kind of completely crushed that possibility and we realize now that he needs a lot more training to actually do something because rengoku and akaza they were you know evenly matched so excuse me so Tanjiro needs to become someone on par with Rengoku, even surpass him. He needs to do that unless and until he wants to. Like, you know, like if he's able to do that, only then he will be able to win uh, against the upper demons. Muzan is way after that. Like, <laughs> Muzan, I don't know when we, he'll, like, you know, Tanjiro will be strong enough to actually fight Muzan. Like, damn, like that's kind of like something which we shouldn't probably think about now because it's kind of impossible unless and until we actually go to the Hashira's level yeah like even after going to the Hashira's level I doubt we'll be strong enough to go against Muzan so we need to surpass the Hashira's level uh, how many 10 times more I guess to become someone capable enough to face Muzan I guess so yeah that's I'm guessing that's something way in the future so yeah let's just think about defeating the upper ranked demons now so yeah but tanjiro is improving very quickly you know like uh, we've seen him improve little by little and i'm sure he'll improve more if after even like you know after he gets to like i'm sure after this he'll go to the um rengoku's place and uh get to know more about the fire breathing technique the Hinokami Kagura. Hopefully, there's something in the books. So that'll probably help boost his power a little bit. So we'll see. And yeah, in the end, we kind of see the uh, crow. I forgot what the crows are called. Uh, anyways, I'm uh, the crow actually going and talking to all the Hashiras, telling them, informing them about um, Ren uh, Rengoku's death. And yeah, the way everyone re reacts to that. And in the end, we see the, the, the head of the, you know, Hashiras. 
and I, I'm, I'm, I actually wonder who those girls are, you know, the, those girls always with him, uh, the two little girls and the adult woman who kind of looks like that girl, those girls. Like, I wonder who they are. I'm sure we'll get to know in the future. Like, you know, they look almost the same. All of them kind of look like the same, like white hair, big eyes. So yeah like at the beginning in the movie at the beginning when that lady was with him uh i thought that that girl was the little girl i was like damn did they like grow up or something what happened but then i realized that no they're completely different people like those two little girls who we saw in season one they're different people this lady here is a different person and they look their appearances are so similar so i'm guessing they're of the same family or something so yeah who knows I'm sure they'll let us know in the future who they actually are and you know what not so yeah that was it that was my reaction to the final episode of uh episode number seven of demon slayer Mugen and Reshahin. so yeah so uh i'm I, again like i'm going to start the second season as soon as it airs within one or two days so keep an eye out for that and uh, yeah so thank you guys for watching this is my reaction to demon slayer mugen resha in episode number seven if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say your opinions about this episode what and anything you want to talk about i'll definitely check them out and uh, so yeah guys that was it um and i'll be seeing you guys uh not next week i'm not sure when uh hopefully yeah obviously by next week uh, uh season two will start so i'll be seeing i i'll probably change the day like you know since like you know every week i was doing i was uh, uh what do you call it uh uploading demon save videos on this day this time i probably will change that i'm not sure it'll probably be one or two day earlier i'll it'll depend i'm not sure so keep an eye out for that uh, for season two episode one it uh, when it comes out i'll try as soon as possible to react to it and start uploading it and then the time will again be the same like you know every week but i'm not sure when it will release so yeah i'll have to keep an eye out and i'll have to see when i will be able to upload season two episode one it'll be within this week so yeah so anyways uh, see you guys then until then goodbye and have a nice day